If you struggle to stay away from an afternoon candy bar or french fries at dinner, you may not believe that trying to be too healthy can be a serious issue, even dangerous. But tonight, some of those who suffer from this little-known compulsion take us inside their meticulous and often maddening worlds. Here's my Nightline co-anchor, Juju Chang. 8 a.m., breakfast time in Santa Monica, California. Always afraid to mess this up. Jenny Victor is meticulously preparing her meal. If something doesn't come out the way I want it to, I will just throw it away. But in Jenny's mind, something's gone terribly wrong. I'm not doing this very well. It's a major fail. I know that if I eat it, it's not going to be appetizing to me. She's an extreme perfectionist. Not only must it look perfect, it has to be perfectly nutritious. This is coconut oil that I like to mash into. And see, I don't deprive myself of calories. I want to nourish my body and eat well. But her compulsive attention to every morsel has morphed into a full-blown eating disorder, one you might have never heard of. It's called orthorexia nervosa, which literally means a fixation with righteous eating. Orthorexia has taken a huge toll on my body. I recently found out that I have adrenal fatigue and an underactive thyroid, and you know, I haven't had a period in almost a year. In a nation where one third of adults are obese, you'd think an obsession with healthy food would be a good thing, but you'd be wrong. Well, when you have orthorexia, every single day is full of anxiety over food. There's been little research on orthorexia, and it's not listed in the official manual for psychological disorders. I'm scared of gluten, I'm scared of grains. Even eating like a sweet potato for breakfast, I wonder how much sugar is in it. We don't really know how prevalent orthorexia is. I think in some measures it's a reflection upon uh, the obsession that part of our society has with food. Jenny was 17 when she says her eating disorder began taking over her thoughts. Six years later, every day is still a battle. I start to get fidgety because I'm so nervous about what to eat. She's struggling mightily over whether or not to order a coconut milk latte. The drink is called Immortal. I know it's good for me. I know it's actually um, really healthy. She orders the latte, revealing a clue as to why she's feeling so anxious. A day like today when I didn't work out at all, I almost don't feel like I deserve as many calories. And ordering a drink like that, you know, kind of a big step for me. I just think this drink is too pretty not to take a picture of. Jenny promptly posts the picture to her Instagram feed. Instagramming has been actually really amazing for me. Um, it's connected me to a lot of other people who are also suffering from eating disorders. Orthorexia has taken on a life of its own on social media. Click the hashtag and you get flooded with highly nutritious but vaguely unappetizing photos of meals. More than 40,000 posts on Instagram from around the world. Girls posting obsessively about each and every morsel they eat. It can signal a much larger problem. Jordan Younger became a vegan sensation, obsessively chronicling her meals on her blog, The Blonde Vegan. That is, until her restrictive diet devolved into orthorexia. How does eating healthy become an eating disorder? When it turns into a, an obsession rather than something that you're doing because you're passionate about it and because you're excited about it, it just takes over your mind. All of a sudden now, you put a picture on Instagram and you have potentially hundreds or thousands of people weighing in and it, it's like throwing gasoline on the fire. Jordan says she restricted her diet so much she developed a strange rash and grew weak and like Jenny, stopped having her period. You were malnourished. I was malnourished, yeah. I was very much restricting myself through the shield of veganism. That's when Jordan revealed her struggle with orthorexia, a dark secret she blamed on her strict vegan diet. She got a surprisingly mixed reaction. You were literally getting death threats. Yeah, I was getting death threats from people, predominant people in the vegan community. It's been a horrible backlash. People telling me that I'm an animal killer, that I'm cashing in on veganism for attention. But other fans, like Jenny, remain staunch supporters, even as Jordan morphed from strict veganism as the blonde vegan to a less restrictive diet as the balanced blonde. On this day, we arrange for the two to meet. She's been a huge inspiration to me. I already kind of feel like she's a friend, so it's gonna be really great to actually meet her for the first time. Hi. Hi. Ooh, 
cool. Nice to meet you, too. I feel like I already know you. They are kindred spirits when it comes to food. I will flip-flop back and forth between different diets because I'm so attached to having a label. Right. And it's like, if it's not vegan, then it's like the opposite. It's like paleo. And it's like, you know, why can't I just be okay with food being food? They both know there's a long road ahead. Once you start talking about it, you, you know, you can't deny it to yourself any longer. The ladies take comfort in knowing they're not alone, but the struggle is ultimately a solitary one. Orthorexia turns you into a nasty person sometimes. I've been really rude to, you know, family and friends just because I myself have not been in a good place. Back home, Jenny's mind turns to dinner. One with just regular chicken and then do one with chicken sausage. Tonight, her mom is joining her for a healthy spaghetti squash dinner. They often order in because the kitchen has become a battleground. Cooking with her or around her is, is simply an anxious type of experience. It's, it I'm not very you nice on. in the kitchen. No, she's not. It's like she becomes possessed with, with food and the anxiety around it, and it makes her just a very selfish person. And it's not something she means to do, it's something that just takes over her. I can't hear you elaborate anymore on it. It's getting to me. Once her mom leaves the table, Jenny reveals a startling fact about how deeply ingrained the disorder is in her life. You kind of don't want to recover from it because you've put so much of yourself into being this way. And I think I'm almost scared to see who I am without all of the stresses I've placed upon myself. She's slowly trying to stop demonizing food and tells us since filming, she's made major progress and says she's no longer obsessing over what she eats. Recovery is not easy and it's, you know, extremely easy to get down on yourself. But I know that I can do this and I think just knowing that I can if I try hard enough is enough to push me to succeed. For Nightline, I'm Juju Chang in New York.